So welcome to the November CAPMAC meeting. Our membership is up to 59. Uh, I think a few folks are still to yet renew from last year. So we may have a few more trickle in on that. All the methods by which you can follow what we're doing at CAPMAC are listed here, as well as on the emails that we've been sending out. So tonight, we have our welcome, which I'm doing right now. We have a little bit of business and announcements. Dwight Brooks is going to share his experiences setting up a new Apple Watch 8. Nancy is going to be talking about tech Christmas gifts, which I believe Tom or Robert mentioned already and the PDF that's put online. And then lastly, our main program will be Nancy and Nathan Lott talking about what's new in iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. So that's what's on the agenda for this evening. But first, let's take a quick look at our board. Uh, it hasn't changed since last time, but here's all those smiling faces to greet you. And should you ever want to uh, join one of the board meetings, we are currently holding them the first Wednesday afternoon of the month. So if you want to attend, contact one of the board members and we can set you up. Now, speaking of the board, November is our month to do elections. So what I'm going to do now is to call us CATMAC officially to order for a business meeting so that we can hold our election. So Bill, would you note for our official minutes that we've done that, please. So last month we had the nomination for all of our officers for 2023. And it wasn't confusing because it's basically all of the officers you have currently in 2022. Myself as president, um, my mind is gone blank. Uh, Say again? Nathan. Nathan. Yes, Nathan is vice president. Thank you. Uh, Tom is our treasurer. Bill is our secretary. Uh, we have Koki and Jim Wynn and Robert as uh, general members to the board. And all of us were nominated last time to continue in those offices for 2023. So at this time, we need to conduct the election. So, uh, Nancy's <laughs> waving her hand. Yes, yeah. Nancy. I move that the election be by acclamation. Thank you, Nancy. Is there a second? I second it. I second. We had two seconds. Um, Bill, did you get who those were, people were? Uh, so, so noted. Perfect. All right, then all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, aye. passed. So the officers as nominated last time and as <clears throat> currently serving will continue for the 2023 term. The uh, Nancy will be uh, officiating in December for the new officers, as she often has been in the past. So with no other official business to conduct, I am adjourning this business meeting so that we can continue on with our regular monthly meeting. Okay. So that said, and thank you all for that participation. Uh, we do have a number of appointed positions. I'm going to be asking for people to take positions as of January, whether they're continuing or wanting to take another position. Uh, and this is some of the ones that are currently serving. Uh, if you missed one of our general meetings, We've been very fortunate to have speakers in the last two years worth of meetings that have allowed us to record them. 
So we have 26 or 28 meetings recorded out in our YouTube channel. If you want to go revisit one of them, there is certainly open to you to do that. If there's someone that you know that might enjoy one of our meetings, point them at our YouTube channel and they can see what we've been doing and see if it's worth them participating with us. Help desk we've been doing at the beginning of every general meeting. I listened and then there was a lot of talk about keychain and, and, <laughs> and with setting up Zoom. That is your, <clears throat> pardon me, that is your time to ask questions to our help desk team. If something comes up during the middle of the month, you can post a question on our Slack channel or send the send a, a query to me, president at catmac.org, and I'll get the question to our help desk team. Okay, the next thing we have on the list here is our coffee with catmac meeting. Now, normally we do that two weeks after this general meeting, but if we were to do that in November, that would be Thanksgiving Day, and I don't think we'd get much attendance. So the board took the action at the last meeting to make the, the November Coffee with Catmac on Thursday the 17th. So it'll be a week from Thursday. Uh, it has already been placed on the shared calendar, so you will see it if you subscribe. And that brings up a question about dis the December coffee meeting. Last year, we didn't have one. Uh, if I look at the calendar, the dates that we could do a coffee with Catmac in December are the 15th and the 22nd. One's three days before, our, before Christmas. The other is two days after our general meeting. And so my question to you all is, do we want to hold a coffee with Catmac meeting in December? And if so, which date? I, I would think the 15th would be a good date. I mean, you know, it's far enough away from Christmas to where, you know, you can still engage in the madness of buying Christmas presents and stuff. And Hearing no other, is there, are there any other comments? Okay, I will make a note to myself that December 15th will be the coffee meeting date. Thank you. Um, all right, moving on. There's been some talk about our 30th anniversary shirts. Tom talked about it last time. Do you want to talk about it a little bit tonight rather than, me than, re rather than have me read this, Tom? Yeah, just real quick. Tomorrow is the deadline to order shirts so that we could have them for the December meeting. What that And that topic will come up shortly. Uh, if you get them on, uh, go to our website and get them on Square. Uh, you, they cost a bit more because we've got to get our fees back. If you mail me a check or Apple Pay directly to me, then... Uh, uh, it's the lower cost from the emails. And if you're going to mail me a check, send me an email immediately so that I know it's coming. And so it will be on the order because the order has to go in Thursday morning and the mail will take a while. And please do not send any mail to the CatMac post office box. Uh, that that post office box is in a state government building. Illegally, the post office gives all the mail that comes there to that state office, who is then supposed to pass on to the post office things that are for the post office. Well, in the past, they haven't always done that. Uh, I know our check to the postmaster there for the renewal fee of the post office box was taken and cashed by that state office. And fortunately, I had proof. Uh, but it's it's a known problem, and it's a big delay anyway, because that, that thing's so inconvenient to get to. Anyway, uh, that's that. And the other thing while I'm talking is your 
apps. Please get those into me quickly. I'm trying to finish up uh, that project as well. And uh, uh, so tell me about your favorite apps. And you do get points for for sending your apps in. And a number of people have crossed the threshold into getting rewards in CatMac Rewards. And those will all be at the uh, December meeting, which John is going to talk to you about in a couple minutes. Any questions? All right, thank you, Tom. One other thing that came up just this last week or so, I was asked on Slack if we have a discount code for Take Control Books. And as it turns out, we do. So you can get a 30% discount on any Take Control Books that you order as an ebook, not the printed ones, but the ebooks. Um, if you this talks about it here, but if you want to take advantage of that, you need a code, let me know and I'll send you the code. I didn't want to include it in my slides because these will be available later on YouTube. So we wanted to restrict who, the, who was able to get the codes to order at a discount. Um, but again, if you want to pursue this, send me an email and I'll give you the code information. Or if you're on Slack, it's out there. I posted it in the general uh, group. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. A couple of things of interest. Uh, this slide I thought was a little bit of, in of interesting. It looks at the number of Apple Music subscribers over time. And over the last six years being listed here, it has grown substantially uh, and very steadily. If I, we look at the video streaming market share, you see Apple is here at about 6%. So it's not a significant player in that market, but it still not, it doesn't have a bad spot. Not the bottom, anyway. In terms of US smartphone market share, Apple is high up there. 48% of the uh, market share for cell phones is owned by Apple. And given that what we see in TV and movies and walking on the street, I'm not surprised. It seems that every other person has an iPhone. And lastly, one little thing I came across in New York Times that I thought was interesting is a look at the number of job openings and resignations over the past, oh, three, two decades, three decades. And, um, you know, I look at this and say, there's certainly a lot of jobs openings right now. But then again, if I go to almost any store anywhere in the country, they all have a help wanted sign out. So I guess on the other hand, it isn't quite so surprising. So I just thought those were some little pieces of information that might be of interest to the group. Now, moving on. Now, Tom uh, mentioned a few minutes ago about people earning points or uh, doing things. One of the ways you can earn points uh, is to share something with the group share a tech tip, share an app, talk about something you found interesting in the Apple environment that you would like to share with others. If you have something like that, let me or one of the board members, <coughs> know, we will work you into the schedule at a future meeting. Um, it's a great opportunity to share what you know with the rest of the group. Now, speaking of that, and I skipped something earlier, so I'm going to pause for a moment before I ask, before we go pursue uh, with uh, Dwight. But did we have any visitors with us this evening? I don't hear any response, so I'm assuming that means we have no visitors. In that case, let me proceed. I'm going to 
stop my screen share and turn it over to Dwight so he can talk about his experiences setting up his Apple Watch. Over to you, Dwight. We can't hear you though. You're muted. Ah, here we go. Okay, I got my first Apple Watch um, a few weeks ago, probably about two and a half weeks ago, and um, I pair. And actually, I got my first iPhone a year ago. So I'm kind of new to the iPhone watch community, though I've been an Apple user for many years. Um, when I got the watch and I um, started setting it up, I kind of ran into a little rabbit hole, in fact, a couple of them. And um, I put a post out on Slack about that. And John thought I should talk about that at this meeting. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, I would like to share with you um, a, uh, well, I just shouldn't start at the end, should I? I should start at the beginning, I guess. Um, I want to share with you a presentation that I put together real quick uh, about this, um, installing the Apple Watch and, and the takeaways that I got from that. Uh, based on my own experience, my own rabbit hole. First takeaway is that it really is an amazing watch. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I purchased it because of its health um, aspects. And I find those to be everything that has been promised. In addition, um, I'm, I'm finding some other things I like about it. I like the way the notifications work. Um, and several other aspects of using the watch. It's really a very great piece of technology. I, I can't imagine, uh, I, I've had, I had a Samsung watch before this, and although it was very good from a health perspective, it wasn't even close to this. Um, and so that's the first takeaway. The second one was- When, when you-, you, when you when you mean health, what are you referring to? Like fitness or heart yes. rate? Or fitness things, heart rate, um, sleep. Anything you want to call health, yeah. I beg pardon? Anything you want to call health. Yeah, really, seriously. So um, Don, Don is the expert on this watch, by the way. If, if anybody has any questions, Don knows a whole lot more about it than I do. But uh, um, the, the watch itself, yeah, it. Um, if, if you open up the health app and you go down through the health app, almost everything in the health app will have a watch component to it. So steps, um, walking up and down stairs, uh, sleep, um, heart rate, and, and, and uh, other things like that. In addition to fitness things, you can all kinds of exercises that you can do through it. At my age, I'm not into a whole lot of exercises, but still, uh, they're available for people that are. Um, did that answer your question? I guess so. Yes. Um, okay. So when I the, the first thing they tell you to do is to put it on and then turn it on. Uh, well, actually, the first thing is to put the band on. You put the band on it. That's trivial exercise. And then they say, put it on and turn it on. Well, I did that, but it wouldn't power up. Um, I tried everything, and heaven forbid, I actually went to the manual and tried to see if I could find out maybe I wasn't trying to turn it on right, but it actually would not power up. So I put it on the charger and it powered up immediately. Um, but this brings us to our first, or rather our second takeaway. And that is the charger requires USB-C power source. If you're not aware of that, you won't find out about it in the hype, I don't think. I went back after I, um, after I, uh, had everything set up, I decided I would take a peek and see whether or not it was in the hype. And I looked through the hype, I looked through the website, and I couldn't find anything associated with the charger 
that said anything at all about USB-C. I went to the store and I looked it up in on the on the page that um, shows the charger, but no details. You cannot tell it's a USB-C power source required. So anyway, that if you don't have a USB-C power source, you will be in pro in trouble. Most people these days do have it because they've got um, a MacBook Pro or something like that. But um, still, if you don't have one, that could be a problem. So the second thing they tell you to do is to bring your iPhone near your Apple Watch. Uh, there are two things to realize here. First of all, you cannot use an Apple Watch without an iPhone. I don't think it works with any other technology. It doesn't work with an Android phone, and I don't believe it works with an um, iPod. It definitely does not work with an iPad. Um, so my, my second rabbit hole was that my watch would not pair. And this is one I missed. It requires iOS 16. I only had iOS 15 on my Apple phone, my iPhone, and but it requires iOS 16. So you need to install iOS 16 before you can uh, set up the watch. It, it was it was almost an effortless uh, journey to install um, iOS 16. I backed it up and installed it. And it was almost effortless. It did screw up my home pages. Um, <clears throat> it. My three, I had three home pages, and they became six home pages when it was done. But that was a fairly easy thing to fix. At that point, it was flawless. There's nothing, nothing to it. That's pretty much it, folks. Thank you, Dwight. Anybody Except have any I can't questions seem to find a, how to okay. stop sharing. Did I stop sharing? You did. Yeah, no. to start. Wait, what? I have a question. Yeah, you didn't you didn't share any slides, Dwight, if you were trying to show us stuff. We got to see oh, your really? face. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Hey, Dwight. Yeah. I do have a question. Uh, this is Arthur Smith. Um, I've been waiting for on the iPhone because early on I was told that eventually um, for us uh, type 2 diabetics, we were going to be a, able to check our A1C, okay, with the iPhone, okay? And that way, I mean, you avoid sticking fingers, which is something I like to try to do. Um, and I don't know where they are in that process right now. I mean, it just seems like uh, they've tried to get around this subject, uh, A1C uh, measurement, and I certainly would like to know if there's been any progress or if there will, if there's something we, sh we can expect from them in terms of checking A1C without having to prick our fingers. I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. I have read something about it, but I don't remember exactly what I read. I, I know it's in the future, but I just don't know when or how. I think it does require the watch. Not just I don't think they've been able to I think come up that with a... Apple and other watch vendors are all working on it, but no one is close to having a product yet. I don't think there's I way believe to, that's they've the... found any way to do it accurately, accurately without uh, you know, piercing the skin and you know, actually accessing the blood. And I think that will it will require an FDA approval. So once yeah. they even get it working it'll take time to get it approved. They may have to figure out how to do it with sweat rather than blood. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a real twist in technology. So do I, I they haven't found out a way to do it accurately. Yeah. Good question though, because I'm waiting. I'm still wearing my Apple series one for that very reason. <laughs> Well, they're, they're in terms of, of uh, things like measuring A1C and stuff like that, there are devices now that, that uh, I've seen on various and sundry websites that will do that. So I just really don't think it's going to be, I hope, uh, not too far away.
Uh, Jeff Poppe just put a, a link out on the uh, chat uh, on this very subject. Yeah, it's in the chat. I'm looking at it now. <laughs> so Dwight, I had a question. Um, with the, If you're wearing the, the watch and you fall down, does it know to notify somebody or if you if you don't respond i mean to me that seems like a great excuse to buy a phone instead of getting one of those i've fallen and i can't get up things uh, it, it is a good reason to buy uh, the, the the watch i'm not sure about the phone but the watch does have fall detection it also has uh for this year for the watch it has crash detection right. uh, one of the one of the three uh new features of the watch are crash detection, um, temperature sensors, uh, right now the only thing they're used for is some women's health items, and also um, accelerometer um, um, uh, and um, gyroscope improvements to help with the crash detection. The fall detection. The, uh... And so what happens if, it, if you fall, uh, the watch will offer to call um, uh, emergency services for you. Likewise, if you have an accident, a crash in a car, it, it, it will call emergency services for you. The I think with the fall, fall detection, you can, um, with the, the fall, fall detection. The fall detection is not very good. Uh, and you better notice when your watch tries to tell you that, did you just fall? And you better say no quickly, or it will call problem uh, cause problems for you. Uh, and mine, my watch is not the very latest one, but even my old one, which is the very first group of them. Uh, lots of false detections on that. Anytime I'm doing any kind of work outside, and uh, there's a sudden start or stop to my my hand movement, it thinks that I've fallen, and uh, it it. A potential problem you've really got to pay attention to it i'm, I'm not really sure but i think that uh, you may be able to set the fall detection not the crash detection but the fall detection to call a certain person rather than default to 911. you can but have I want to agree with tom on this because uh, i have a six and um, when i wash my hands Sometimes I shake the water off my hands a little bit too vigorously, and before I get my hands dry, beep, 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 are you okay? You know, and you have to answer twice. You have to say, no, I didn't fall, and then, no, I don't need any help. Yeah. So, uh, Jill and I were in Dallas. It can be a good thing, though, because when we went in with a friend of ours to the Apple store, she was contemplating buying an eight, but she wasn't really understanding the fall detection. So I said, okay, watch what happens. And I banged my hand on the table. And within about three seconds, my watch was saying, did you fall? Did you fall? And I showed it to her. And she says, oh, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. It's a hoot. About a, two weeks ago, we were in Dallas and I fell really hard in a parking lot and my watch did not go off. And then about three or four days later, when we were back in Austin, I, I got in my car and it said, it looks like you've fallen. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but anyway. It needed your car's Bluetooth, I guess. I guess, I don't know what the deal was. <laughs> It seems like a good idea. It's nice to hear where they are in actuality. So thanks for sharing that. Speaking of things, we talked about number of flights, you know, that you've gone upstairs. Well, I think there's a certain distance you have to climb. There's this stairway that I like to climb when I'm walking around the neighborhood. And I have to put my phone down by the ground for a few minutes. So it kind of knows that is the start point and get up to the top of the stairs and put it way up over my head. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't get credit for that flight. So yeah, I, don't, it I like think it's like 10 feet that you have. Yeah, to, it's 10 feet. Yes. It yeah. sounds like the stairway to heaven. Yeah. And I think yeah. most people that might see me <laughs> think this is a weird ritual. <laughs> but, but it does accumulate, uh, it does accumulate walk uh, steps up. 
So if you walk up the stairs, let's say eight feet, uh, uh, enough times, it, I mean, once it won't show that you walked up once. You walk up the second time, it'll show you walked up once. And if you walk up, what, nine times, it'll show you walked up nine times. On the flip side, if you're ever like in London where they have these really deep escalators, you can get a lot of credit if you just move <laughs> your feet a little while you're going up the escalator. <laughs> Well, Dwight, I want to thank you for sharing your adventures with your Apple Watch. At this time, I want to turn it over to Nancy so she can tell us about all the wonderful things we can spend money for this Christmas. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming together to watch my 739 vacation pictures. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and the second thing that seriously that I want to point out is um, when I put this list together and I spent about probably five to six weeks putting it together. Let me open it up. It'll make more sense. Um, wait a minute. Let You're going to share a list with us. We can't see anything. I'm going to share it. Yeah, I'm just a little slow. Um, where is it's, it? If you look at the top of the chat, there's also a link to <clears throat> what she's going to share. Where is it? Oh, here Anybody it is. Anybody wants to open it up. Where, where in the chat? At the top of the chat, the very first thing. The very first thing, or maybe I signed in late, but the first thing was me saying congratulations, thanks to the new officers. So maybe I'll, you can I'll, put it up again because people I'll, that I'll, weren't signed in yet don't see it. I'll put it okay. in. Okay, can y'all see this? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yay. Yeah. Okay, I, I want to point out that under the heading of where to find it, a lot of them are going to say Amazon just because Amazon is easy for people to get to with the understanding that I no longer drive. So I was not able to go out and, you know, actually physically shop for things. But the, the titles that I put in here, like levitating plant pot, is what you would use to find something on Amazon. So I hope I hope that that's a help. Um, and I'm not going to go through every one of these. Right. Because Nancy, are you sure that's not an, out of order? Shouldn't it be levitating pot plant? No. I would hope. No, it's not. That's it's, a joke. That, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go over everything because if you're, you know, really hunting for stuff, you can, um, you know, look at the list yourself. And if anybody wants me to actually send them a copy, just let me know at ingrabbly at mac.com. Okay, the first thing that's on here and, and the second thing that's on here <coughs> are new. Um, if you look at if you look at the plant pot, you will see that it is hovering above the bottom piece. And that's exactly what it does. It sits on um, a magnet kind of thing and it twirls it twirls around all the time that it's working and um it's it's very interesting anybody who comes i actually have one and anybody who comes into my house it seems like the first thing they notice is that and want to know how it works uh, my, unfortunately my cat likes it too and she keeps uh, bucking it and making it stop the second one the globe uh, is the same format um, more perhaps for uh, you know desk or or you know more formal settings whatever whatever is of interest and there are a number of versions of it so if you are interested in anything like this you can start on Amazon <laughs> the next thing is the Lego Ferrari at four hundred bucks that you can put together with Legos. Um, if you know if that's somebody's thing and you have 400 bucks um the the mute me thing is to be used with with zoom uh for people who can't remember i guess to turn off their um their volume when they're not talking but it's a handy thing to use if you're in meetings and it's you know it's really important that you don't uh, have any background noise showing that makes a good gift. 
Uh, Does it shut up the people around you? I don't believe so. I think, let's see. No. Well, conversations in the kitchen? I think it would, yeah, I think it would, it would cut out any, any of those um, conversations that, you, that are, especially if you're doing a work Zoom and you, you know, you want to be somewhat uh, professional. Um, it would work, but go, <clears throat> go to muteme.com and read about it if you, if you're really interested in it. Okay, and on this page, um, the ultrasonic jewelry cleaner is a fantastic thing, primarily because it will clean your glasses for you as well as cleaning any jewelry that you might have. This particular one from Charper Image, of course, is more expensive than ones you can find other places, but um, I'm pretty, I have, again, I have one, not this one, and I'm pretty, pretty impressed with how well it can particularly clean my glasses. Um, if you have somebody who's really into AirPods, if you look down, um, there, there's some really lovely cases there that somebody, if they like to carry it around on their belts, uh, you know, some people, some people need their, their um, AirPods with them all the time. And if they do, then you want to be able to protect them. You don't want that case dropping and having them fall out. Um, a good thing for adults or teens is this remote control helicopter. Um, I know that a lot of people are into um, oh, those things that those things that go helicopters, uh, drones, no, not, uh, zo um, drones, drones. Thank you, drones. And this is just another version that maybe is not not going to get you in trouble. Okay, Nancy, uh, you yes. mentioned the AirPods up at the, at the beginning there. Well, you didn't mention it, but it's on your list. Yeah. Um, do those do sound canceling as well? Yes. In my experience, they do. I used them on the airplane, and um, that it, they even cut out the noise that the airplane itself makes. So yes. Yeah. I was pretty impressed um, with it. Wait a on minute. the AirPods or the AirPods Pro. Um, they have the, there is software <clears throat> in the, in the computer or devices you're using and you can, um, there's a limited amount of audio processing that, that you, that you can do with them. Noise cancellation just happens to be one of them. Okay. Um, but there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, the, the, the ear pieces are kind of funky. Okay, and what I mean by that is if you, uh, if you happen to have them in your ear and pop them out, sometimes the piece, the ear piece, the plastic piece that slips into your ear will come off. You don't need to panic because it's merely a, a uh, thing. All you have to do is snap it back into place. Okay, it takes a little bit of, of investigating on your, your part because there's an oval shape that you have to to watch for it will snap in when you put it over the oval shape and then press down okay it'll make a little click i actually found that that's not true on the ipad on the airpod pros um which is the kind that i have um it's actually hard hard to even take that thing off so i i guess maybe maybe they've improved it a little bit nancy okay. uh-huh if i may i'd like to expand on the uh, airpod pros yep um they are set up in such a way that you can go to your ent doctor and get your hearing mapped and you can send that map and your earpods into apple and they will tune your air AirPods so that you hear the way everybody else hears around whatever slight disability you might have, uh, a loss of uh, signal strength in the 5,000 hertz range, or you aren't very good with uh, 18,000, or when you get down to uh, 30, you know, you can't hear it. It'll, they'll adjust that based on that map. That's fantastic. I did not know that. So that's kind of almost like a hearing aid. 
Yeah, yeah that's it what I'm thinking. It's, not, it's not a hearing aid because it's not boosting anything. What it's doing is it's tweaking the frequencies. Okay, so it doesn't well, have basically, I mean, or, or reaching out or anything. Yeah, but the uh, hearing aid companies will do that for you. I mean, it's not amplification is is part of it in terms of the hearing right. aid, but they will. Yeah. I'm sure that there are companies that will do that and and not boost things tremendously. Right. That's that's really exactly. good to know. Well, I heard him say if, if you can take the the audiologist report that, that uh, you get when you when the audiologist tests you and, and send that in, that'd be terrific. Oh yeah. I think you have to ask for it and tell them why you want it so they know what to do. Yeah. But I, I found that the that the uh, ability to block out all that noise on the airplane was, was really um, impressive because, you know, for an eight or nine hour flight, uh, that stuff gets old. OK, so on this page, does it have to be uh, I mean, I guess I have an early version of the AirPods. I mean, do they all have that sound canceling yeah. or is this a newer thing? I can only speak to the newer to the AirPod Pro. I've had an AirPod Pro for a couple of years and it, it came with it that on it. It's just I, mean, I need to check because it's certainly a lot smaller than the Sony sound canceling headsets that I carry. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. This this first thing on this next page is the signal booster. And it's for people who you know, maybe you're stuck with with um, a, a poor provider of internet service like um, uh, what's their name, Tom? Um, Spectrum, AT. Spectrum, yeah. Or if you have a two bedroom, um, I mean a two story house or something, you may need to boost <clears throat> the signal in other parts of the house. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so I just thought that would be a, a nice thing to include, and and then. The star scope, my, 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 uh, the, the telescope for smartphones works with the um, the phone to let you be able to really see distances. I think somebody would be have to you know have a special interest to to be you know want something like this. But I wanted you to know that it was available. The um, the globe building thing, which is $140 on Amazon, um, is very similar to Legos, but it lets you build a, a whole, the whole globe and, and put it together. And if you have a kid who's just really into to building, um, it's something you might consider. And of course, the AirTag. I can't say enough about AirTags, um, about what happens when you leave your keys in the mailbox. Uh, on the first floor, and you can't find them. Or and and we we use them in our suitcases, so um, they're they're really a, a good thing to have. Um, the Beats wireless own ear headphones got some really great reviews, uh, and they're available both at Amazon and at Walmart. And I did include a drone because a lot of people are interested in drones. I actually gave one to my um, my brother last year, who's over 70. And um, he had a he had a great time playing with his drone. So you can get them a lot cheaper than you could get them, you know, five years ago. Um, the the um, the this mouse, which is supposed to be, you know, the latest thing and comfortable for your hand comes both with uh, wires and without. And they're not expensive. Um, if you again, or you know somebody, because most of us are not not still working too much. But if somebody really has to do a lot of video conferencing, um, and it's important that they that they make a good professional appearance, this light, this video conference lighting kit, will help put that person in the best light when when they're speaking on Zoom. Um, oh, and this last one on here, this rocket book, reusable notebook, you take notes in that, and then they're saved up to the cloud, and then the page is empty, and you take notes again. Um, so it's a, it's a, 
it, it's brand new, it's something that's brand new. And, um, you know, some people are gonna, gonna really like that. Some people like to just, just have, you know, keep journals, but for somebody who's having to take notes and, and um, wants to be able to make sure they still have them, this is a nice, unusual gift. Um, where does, uh, Nancy, where does it save those notes? To the iCloud. To the iPad? So the iCloud. Oh, <clears throat> iCloud. Okay, I thank cloud. you. Yep. Um, there's another drone here that's only $27. Um, for young teens, I think it would probably you know, be a good choice uh, if they just want to play around with, with the technology. Um, the mini projector was really written up a lot because evidently the teens like to use this to, uh, to, to show their pictures on, on their walls and stuff for their friends. So if you have somebody that's into that, that would be a good gift. Um, again, there's a there's a magnetic floating globe um, where if you don't, um, it would be, well, it's $93, but um, it would be an interesting gift for somebody who's really into geography. The next one, the Gillo Baby Remote Control Robot is designed for kids six and up, and it does all kinds of things, and it changes into all kinds of shapes. And if you want to get the kid away from um, the iPad for a while, it can be a good gift. Same thing for the next one, but it's for kids that are seven to 10. Um, my, my grandson, who is 10, put one of these together and he was absolutely fascinated with it and played with it for days and days, um, even though he had his iPod sitting right next to him. So um, it's something that they, that they might enjoy. And here we've got the telescope. Um, the writing tablet is designed for kids three and up. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it. I think it may store stuff on the computer or the iPad for the kids. Um, if they're into music, the keyboard. Um, if they're really little, like two to four, uh, these uh, cartoon remote controlled cars give them the opportunity to, to well, actually, what it does is it gives them the opportunity to run this car across the floor so that you trip over it, but we're not going to get into that. Um, and, and the, the next one, the Fisher-Price Code and Learn Kinderbot actually teaches little kids how to code. Okay. Um, the block, block cells it uh, uh, is something else that was getting really high reviews um it uh, it's a game I, I be honest with you i don't remember everything that i read about it now but if you're if you think your kid will be interested in it it's you know like um, middle school kids and the this zoom cam that, that's next um is something that that a lot of kids apparently like to play with you get them taking pictures um, again, getting them away from the iPad all the time. And then the last one is the rocket stomp bracers that, um, that, other, that uh, excuse me, that older kids might like five and up. So that's my suggestions. Um, there's a lot of options in there and I hope that, um, you know, that somebody will find some things that they're interested in. And I've just got one more thing to, to say that has nothing to do with this. And that is, to thank all of y'all who uh, participated in the surprise that the um, London Mac group did for me by bringing everybody in uh, on Zoom and to apologize because we were two hours late getting there. Um, we couldn't get a cab and it was an hour's drive from our hotel to, to where the, it, we were meeting. And then when we got there, we couldn't find the, the the building where the meeting was taking place. So the whole thing was um, just horribly embarrassing and, and upsetting. And I apologize to people who had to put up with it, but I certainly appreciated the, the it's thought. It's a great birthday for you, Nancy. Do what? It's a great birthday for you. Yes, it was. That, that, that you were there. 
Yeah, it, it gave was, us an opportunity to have a lot of conversation and uh, we turned it into fun waiting for you. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that because I've just been mortified over. The we we did have to educate a few of the Brits that everyone in the U.S. doesn't want to be called a Yank. That was kind <laughs> of amusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're a good group and they're very, very different. Their setup is totally different from ours. Um, but you know, that's what meets their needs. So I was really, really happy to be able to. And today I finally got a copy of the picture of Nancy at that meeting. Uh, if anybody would like uh, to, me to send that to them, just send me an email or something. I thought we were going to post those photos on uh, the website. Not many photos. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is the ones from a guy named Tom that, that was there today. The ones that the, they were going to post on the website, those, those are ones that somebody else has got. And I'll believe it when I see it because I've been trying to get stuff posted for a month. Right. But I, I finally got these three pictures. Uh, okay. One of Nancy and Brian, uh, one of Brian talking to somebody and one of Nancy. So. I, cut you off. I, I just found I took a screenshot. I can share it right now if anyone wasn't wasn't <laughs> there. Sounds good. Okay, John, back to you, unless somebody has some questions. There's there's uh as you can see, there was a whole bunch of people that were still there. Yeah. As, as Nancy got there. And I'll I'll send this to you, Tom. Yeah, it, it was a it was a big surprise. It was a conspiracy. It That's was right. a conspiracy. <laughs> uh, it was a big surprise. It was over two years late, but you know. Yeah, that's true. Well, we took you off of a bunch of email lists and all kinds of stuff so that you wouldn't get any clues. And, and I didn't. I I had absolutely no clue. Uh, <laughs> when Dave Hamilton's picture popped up, and then. Um, all of y'all's pictures popped up. I thought, oh my goodness, and we're two hours late. That's all, that's all I could worry about. It's making everybody wait that long. <clears throat> we made good use of the time. We got to get got to talk to the, the Brits. That was fun. Yeah, they're a good group. Well, and there were there were people from other groups like Washington and yeah, you know, oh, there yeah. were people from around the US. Yeah. Berlin and North yeah. Africa. They have members from all over, all over yeah. the world. Yeah, the guy today at the at the London group meeting, there was the president of the group from Washington D.C. There was a couple yeah. people from Florida. Yep. But they do a good job of in person and Zoom meetings. Um, and 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 uh, Craig, Craig. The guy from over there wanted my hat, but I wouldn't give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I'd get him one, but he couldn't have mine. Oh, was it a Longhorn hat? No, it was. It's a uh, newsboy hat, newsboy cap, which I guess they'd never seen. Um, it's one I've had for years, but um, yeah, he he was real. He was real intrigued by my cap. Uh, actually, Craig was in uh, New York City today on a train. He missed the London Mac user group meeting. Wow. Well, hopefully he'll come back and see us soon. Yeah. Well, Nancy, thank you for putting that list of good things together for us all to think about. You know, some interesting ideas there, as as well as sharing your your feelings and uh, about the the Elmug meeting. So that brings us to the main part of our program, which we're going to bring Nancy right back. And she no, and they. I'm not, I'm not doing part of this. Oh, you're not. No, I'm not. I, for some reason, it's, I thought you were. It's, it's all Nathan. Ah, okay. Well, Nathan, it is all in your hands then. <laughs> Light him up.
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, very good. So let's start with this. I'm using continuity camera as my webcam with my iPhone 13 Pro. I, I don't have that new Balkan clip because it won't fit on a desktop monitor. I heard that the clip is really, really tiny. It only will fit on the laptops. But uh, <clears throat> so I just wanted to demo this a little bit. It, you can turn on these video effects in Control Center. So I can turn on center stage, which will put me right in the center. Mm. And if I move, it moves with me. Are you supposed to be screen sharing right now? No, not yet, not yet. He's just screen sharing himself. Then he's, showing, also, he's showing how the camera follows him. You what can kind also of camera on, is, is it again, Nathan? This is called continuity camera. It lets your iPhone be a webcam for your computer. And that's available in iOS 16 and Ventura. Then there's portrait mode, which blurs the background, and then studio lighting. Man, it looks really good. <clears throat> and then you can just uh, turn those all off. Then there's desk view, which doesn't look as good. And uh, you just have to have it placed the right way, I guess, in order to, it's supposed to be able to use one of the three cameras on your phone to take a picture or to show your desk uh, a straight up top down view. But the way I have it situated, I guess it doesn't work that way. So let me start sharing my screen and I'll show you how I did that. It doesn't have a zoom function, does it? No. So if I, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, if you, you go into control center, which is by the date and there is video effects. So it says my iPhone camera is connected and then I can turn on center stage, portrait or studio light or all three. And it works with FaceTime, it, Zoom. You know, it looks you, like you Nathan, use to, Nathan, it uh, looks like uh, we're looking at your um, your desktop. Are we supposed to be looking at? Yes. Can you see uh, up in the top corner uh, near the time? The top right. Oh, I'm sorry. I had something <laughs> yeah. blocking it. My my fault. Oh, uh, now. And so that is where the video effects are. Center stage, portrait, and studio light. It's a cool background picture. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, Puerto Ranzis. So I wanted to start with that. And then I'm going to take off my iPhone because I want to show some stuff on the iPhone. So it's going to probably going to be a black screen. Uh, one question. Um, th is this an app that's available on the App Store? No, uh, no it comes built in with uh with ios 16. oh okay it works with any camera it's a way of controlling your camera so if... it, it's, it's a way of using your iphone as a webcam okay so this isn't like a webcam but it's when you're using the <clears throat> iphone okay yes it, it's using the um the nice 4k or whatever picture from the iphones uh, as a webcam So, I think it has so, to be. So, which have to have so, so placement is really important. Then, how, how do you place it so that it's not blocking your screen? If you want to. So I got a retractable arm on Amazon. <laughs> um, That's it. Let's see. Let me see if I can change cameras. 
So a strong point for this would be um, a desktop computer that has um, a monitor, a keyboard, and uh, a variable size tower, which naturally doesn't have a camera automatically built in. Like That's notebooks. Right. I have a Mac Mini that doesn't have anything. Just okay. Okay. So I have a Mac Mini too, and and I have to use a, a little portable camera that I had to buy. So are you saying that this will work on the Mac as well? The yeah yes um, it the whole point is that you can use your iPhone as a webcam for your Mac. Okay, thanks. I missed that. So okay, instead so of the, instead the, of like the Logitech the little retractable camera. arm that I have that's situated right above my monitor. Oh, okay. Is that attached to, to your screen? To your no, um... it's it's sitting right behind it. Oh, I see. Okay. Attached to the desk. That <laughs> doesn't matter which operating system you have on your Mac. Uh, no, you do need Ventura. Oh. So you need Ventura? Yes, you need Ventura and iOS sixteen. What oh. What's Ventura? That's the the latest operating system. Oh, for the Mac. For, for the Mac. Mac. It just came out. Yeah. Not very long ago. Okay. Week or so. Yeah. It's for a reason. Okay. So, what I'm showing the video now is not the continuity camera. Now I've switched over to a competing app called Reincubate Camo. <laughs> and you can do a lot more control with it. So, I've been I've been going back and forth between the two. But now I'm going to take off my video completely so I can show you some of the features on the phone. Okay, can you see my phone? Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. All right, so let's talk about the lock screen. That was the big feature of iOS 16. And in order to change or add lock screens, you tap and hold on it. And then you can swipe between your different lock screens or add new ones. Now, if you want this special depth effect where it's kind of like a magazine where the, the head is covering the time, then you cannot have any widgets on your lock screen. And so it produces this depth effect of a lock screen like that. Oh, that's cool. And only in portrait mode, right? Yes. Now the, you're saying you're saying these are lock screens. They're not home screens, right? They're lock screens. Yes. I didn't know you could have more than one lock screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a brand new feature. It's yeah, it's it's a new feature of this okay. operating system here. Okay. So now then, if if you want to add some of the featured ones that Apple includes. So like there's one for weather that if, if it's, it must be, is it rain? Looks like it. <laughs> it, uh, it shows rain. Or there's an astronomy one that shows where, uh, a green dot where you are on the globe. Or you can get a detailed view or the moon or a detailed view of the moon. Weird. There are different, like weather collections, astronomy, different colors, then suggested photos. This takes photos from your library that it thinks would make a good, or have a good depth effect or a good uh, photo for your lock screen. So it suggests, suggests some to you. 
and then you can even uh, shuffle so it changes throughout the day. And then you can also at the top browse by photos, people, emoji, astronomy, colors. Then you can customize it. So you can customize the wallpaper for your lock screen or your, this is where you can do your home screen. But let's take a look at the lock screen and you can have now a widget right above the time and right below the time. Right now, it's the standard day and month, but you can have, for example, the, the, the weather, the degrees, or your activity rings from your watch. Different apps allow you to have information. So Apollo is a Reddit app. There's calendar, uh, carrot weather, clocks, drafts, fantastic how your fitness activity rings again. A lookup is a, a dictionary, so it gives you a word of a day. Uh, Music Harbor is shows all the new releases that are coming to Apple Music. Overcast is a podcast player. Pedometer is a third-party pedometer app. Reminders, streaks, weather, and then your own custom ones if you use Widget Smith. So all that can go on top. Then you have a separate area for widgets below. And these are more like the Apple com complications or the Apple Watch complications. They work a lot like that. So you have these round ones, the small ones, you have the, and you have the medium sized ones. So for example, this, this one that says lights all off, that's at where I have my, um, a smart plug with my bedside lamp. I can, I can tap that. It mm. opens up the home map and I can turn my light lamp on. or the other one is the weather. And so each home screen can have different complications. So this one has the calendar and the activity. This one has the Music Harbor brand new albums and a, a playlist from my music library. And so on, so those are your uh, some examples of your lock screens. And Nathan, where do you go to, to make those changes in your lock screen? So once you, this is what Dwight was talking about. When you, up, you upgrade to iOS 16, you'll automatically see that your clock is a different font. The, you, you have all these different lock screens now available to you and uh, everything's kind of changed. And, and so once you upload to I, or upgrade to iOS 16, you start seeing this difference. And then you just have to kind of customize and decide what you want. One of the things I noticed when I upgraded was the color was different. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if I go back to sharing Pink. and go to my lock screen, you can, I forgot to say that you can customize the time itself so you can change the, the font. Oh, okay. Of the That's time cool. and the color. even uh, up to a full grid or a spectrum. Oh, 
Cool. Or sliders. Now I want to go back to the way it was before. All right. So yes, you do have control over all of that. Now, if you do add your own, so there's a, a photos down here. So let's say I wanna take one from my library. Let's do my dog, Stella. And you can pinch the crop. You can swipe. So this is the natural one. There's a black and white, duotone, color wash, and those are the four options you get. Cool. So that's customizing your lock screens. One other thing, in, in notifications now, mine doesn't show it, but you can go into settings and notifications. And now you can, instead of just showing the little strip that shows your notifications, you can just get a number. Like it'll say three notifications and, and that's all, all it will say. If you tap where it says three notifications, then it will actually show you those, uh, those strips. But if you just don't wanna see that, you just wanna see like a, a min, min, really minimalistic kind of view, then you can just show the number. Are you speaking of grouping notifications by app or, or are you speaking of something else? Unfortunately, I don't have an example of it, but because I don't have any notifications right now, but if you go <clears throat> into settings, and notifications, there are now three options. You have oh. the stack, which is what you were talking about where they're all grouped on top of each other. You have a list and then you just have a count where it just says three notifications or two notifications or whatever else you have. Cool. Now let's move on to some of the Ventura stuff and look at the other big feature that was released in iPad OS 16.1 and Ventura, and that is Stage Manager. Now, Stage Manager didn't show up for me the first time uh, uh, as soon as I downloaded. Catalina, I kind of had to, I mean, as soon as I downloaded Ventura, I had to look it up on Google how to enable it. And it turns out that you have to go to system settings and they have changed system settings completely. It's now more like the iPad and iOS system settings. And then you go into desktop and dock and all the way down to the bottom, you have to make sure that group windows by application is turned on and displays have separate spaces. That also has to be turned on. If those are not turned on, then stage manager won't work. It's just grayed out over here in this stage manager area. So once those are turned on, then it allows you to use it and it shows up in your dock. And that's what this square with the three dots next to it is. It also will, will be in your control center. So the way it works is when you slide over, you'll see all of your open applications in this little slide over area on the left. So I have messages, photos, mail, Safari, and Zoom. And I click on each one and it will open up into the different 
Wow. Applications. So does, is that in place of tabs? This is in place of, uh, well, it's not in place of anything because everything else is still there. There's still, there's still spaces and mission control. Okay. And if I wanted, it hasn't gone away. And if I wanted to do control tab, I could go through all the uh, applications that are currently running. Yes, that still works. Okay. So it's just uh, on the on the Mac, it's not as necessary or as brand new as it is on the iPad. And and uh, on the iPad, there's still a lot of disagreement among some of the power users on whether it is a good thing or not. Consensus is it's not. <laughs> but uh, it's, it, they're just using it the way, that, not the way that Apple wants them to use it, which is bringing up a full screen of an application uh, one at a time. And that's the way Apple has always viewed the iPad is a kind of one at a time application kind of computer. What do you have to do to activate this on the iPad? All right, so let me show you on the iPad what it looks like. <clears throat> on the iPad, oh, wait, hold on. You need a 12.9 inch iPad Pro third generation and later, an iPad Pro 11 inch first generation and later, or an iPad Air fifth generation. So it only works uh, with the newer generation iPad Pros. In the beta, they were only gonna have it work on the newest M1 iPad Pro and nothing else. Then there was a lot of pushback on that. So they added those other models. So I have a M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And again, if you go into Control Center, that's where you can turn it off and on. It has the same icon. So if I go into Mail and swipe over, I can see the same stage manager screen. So I have my podcast player, Pocket Casts, the New York Times crossword app, a weather app called Snowflake, and notes. Oh, and the keyboard popped up. Okay. Yeah, because uh, notes was activated. Does a keyboard pop up if you've already got the um... Magic Keyboard associated with the uh, iPad? I don't have a Magic Keyboard. I just have a Bluetooth keyboard. Yeah, me too. But well, even so, if, you're, if your Bluetooth keyboard is paired with the device. Yeah, it, it won't pop up. The virtual but I keyboard have it not pop up? Present. Yeah, it won't pop up if, if it's paired. OK. But also, in iOS 15, late in iOS 15, they added something called universal control. Mm -hmm. So I can, with my Mac mouse, I can just take my cursor all the way to the, to the right, and it, it goes into my iPad screen. And so I can control the iPad with my Mac mouse and my wired Mac mouse and with my wired Mac keyboard. Hmm. Let's see.
yeah, you won't be able to see that via via sh sharing. I'm gonna have to I would have to take a video of that from the outside to show that. But it, just moving your mouse cursor off the screen, it's like it's like having um, an additional monitor. So I, I have two monitors on my desk. I can move to the left to get to the other monitor or move to the right and go to my iPad monitor, iPad screen. But then it doesn't show the Mac on the iPad screen. It shows the iPad, but I can control the iPad with my Mac mouse or my Mac keyboard. Let's uh, talk about some of the settings for <laughs> Stage Manager. Um, let me hide some of this stuff. Okay, can you see this? Recent applications. Yes. So these are the, these are the stage manager settings. Recent applications just shows that. Wait a minute. When it's on, it shows the stacks on the left. And when it's off, it hides the stack. So you can see that the stacks are hidden. If I turn it on, then the stacks, well, now it's not showing anything. Oh, I have it turned off. That's why. So with it, With it on, it shows all the stacks all the time. So whatever uh, applications you have open. Okay. With it off, it, it will hide it until you mouse over it, and then it will show it. And then desktop items. You notice that I, I don't have any it's not showing any desktop items on my desktop, even I, though I, I have a lot. If because uh, I have that turned off, if I have that turned on, then you can see them mm -hmm. all show up. Now, if I have that turned off and I go and click into my Finder, then you can see it. But while you're in another application, it hides those those desktop applications or desktop items. It's the whole purpose is it wants you to kind of focus on the app that you're working on. And then you have the show windows from an application. This works the best with email. So one at a time, if I'm in an email, that will just bring up the email and and put the other email app in the background. But if I have it set on all at, all at once, then it will show at the email plus the email app. So I have the email in front of it and then the email app behind it. And I would just keep that on all at once, because that kind of get, can get confusing when uh, your email app disappears from behind you. Or if you open another Safari window, the window you're working on could disappear, or the one in the background disappears and all that. Let's see. Nathan, you can also yes. have you can also have multiple apps open on your window, and then they can go over to the side um, 
together. So if you had like your mail and your slack and maybe something else you could so yes uh, if i had um so here's email and i wanted to put email and messages together i can drag messages on top so now mail and messages are grouped so every time i go to this stack i will always get messages with email then if i want to ungroup them, then I just drag this top one out again. And wait, how did I do that? Oh, you have to, I think you have to, yeah, you have to drag it back. So you have to drag it the other way back into the stack in order to separate the groups. Yeah. That's also a little bit confusing. <clears throat> And all of this works the same way on the iPad. Only difference on the iPad is in the settings, all the, the only settings are you can hide the dock or you can hide the, the, uh, the stacks on the left, but, or you can hide both or show both. And you can do those in any combination. The other thing on the iPad is Bring that up again. So if I go into my podcast app, it well, let's see. Let's go to mail. No, going. If you tap on the, it's it's not in full screen. If you tap on the three dots up here, then it will. Um, one of the options when I'm not screen sharing, it will be a uh, full screen. But because I'm screen sharing, it's just when I tap on on the app, it's it's going into full screen automatically. So it's not showing the the resizing, but it does now have this little handle on the bottom and you can hmm. resize the window. Now is it showing? Yeah. yeah, now it shows you can jump straight into a full screen or add another window. No. Uh, Nathan? Yes. Something I read, but I haven't tested it, said that as far as control tab, like he was asking about a while ago, doesn't work on the iPad right now. Um, as far as... With, probably will work with an external keyboard. I, I don't know. That's I mean, I just read something that said it doesn't work, but maybe, I, like I say, I haven't tested it. That's good. Oh, but you know what? Let's try this. I mean, it should work, but I don't think it. they said it didn't. Which may just be part of the way iPads are. But. Hold on one minute. Let me start up camo on my phone and I'll use the phone to take a picture of the iPad and no no okay so here's the iPad and I don't know if you can see there's a a small dot that's oh. that's my mouse cursor with the Mac. Right. And then I'm let's go to email and 
Yeah, it, it, it's showing the. Uh, is it showing it? Yeah, it's it's showing the the bar. Well, that's good. That's better. Can you see that? Yeah, you yeah. can see that in my uh, my thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, I can. Well, that's good. So some I'd read said it wasn't working, but maybe they fixed it. All right. Quit that. All right, now let's go on to some of the other features and I'll, I'll go app by app on this and let's look at photos. So in 16.1 in Inventura, they added the now the ability to share mm -hmm. libraries. And this is the one I've been waiting for because my wife and I have different Apple IDs. And so whenever she takes a picture, the, it stays on her phone until I have time to airdrop it onto my computer because I kind of collect all of them into my main photo library. No. But now we can share a library. And so if you see this little icon of the the two people that's on, on top of the photo, that's a shared photo now. And so that appears on her phones or her devices, and it also appears on mine. So I can just show my personal library, the ones that I take, or I can show the shared library, the ones that are, that are from her phone or that I've shared with her, and then both libraries now. Now on your phone, when you go into the, the camera, let me share my phone screen. And go into camera mode, there's a new little tag. It's crossed out now, but it is, this will add it to the shared library if you tap that. If you don't want to share this picture to your shared library, then you can tap that again and it's just going to be saved to your personal library. Okay. So you can decide from the camera app whether you want to share that picture or not. In order to set it up, you go into settings and photos. There are photos. Oh, there they are. Photos. And then library. I have it shared with my wife now. And then It will give you the option to share with someone else and it will walk you through the steps of sharing it with that other person. Now, what I didn't, what I still don't understand is the way I set it up is I did it from both ways. I, I shared with me from her phone and I shared with her from my phone. And I guess, I don't know if that's, that was, the right thing to do, but that's what made sense to me. So I don't, th that's how I, I've fixed that. And then you can also leave the shared library if it becomes just too cumbersome or, or things aren't working right. Now, what it did do though, is one of the new features of iOS 16 is supposed to be duplicate photos, it completely took that out of the equation. So it's not showing any duplicate photos, even though I'm sure I have duplicate photos. Like some of these. So that might just be a bug in it, or it's not quite, it's still kind of in a, 
semi beta form, even though it's out. But it's not detecting any uh, duplicates for me. Oh. Um, let me show you some of the other other cool features in photos, though. One thing is, and, and this is now added to the Mac as well, is uh, this visual lookup, which they added in iOS 15, but have enhanced on. So it used, in iOS 15, they added, you could identify people, dogs, and landmarks. So, if I go to my dog and you see this uh, eye, it has a little star next to it. If you, that's the get info, and it will put a little paw mark. And when you click on that, it thinks it's a Jack Russell Terrier. I don't think that's right, though. but it will try to guess the breed of the dog or it will try to guess what the type of flower it is or what type of landmark. So it, it, it now works with bugs, statues and birds. So let's try a bird. There's a bird. Take this pelican here. Yeah. And it says it's a brown pelican. Yep. Or this one says it's a grady grit. Yep. That's right. And then, uh, as well as bugs. Or, so I had a butterfly, or let's see. yellow garden spider. Uh, there's a tarantula. So Nathan, is this just new features in photos and with the new operating system? Or? Yes, yes. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Nathan? Yes. Where, um, for the tarantula there, it said it was a tarantula, but in the bottom right, it said similar photos. So what if you really think that's a wolf spider instead? Does it, will it narrow it down? Uh, it says similar web images. So we'll just show you different images from the but web. But they'll all be tarantulas then, right? Yeah. Okay. Or it will... It gives you this one gives you a couple op options. It could be a Texas brown tarantula or something in the Alphanoma palma family or genus. <laughs> so that is called visual lookup. Oh, and landmarks as well. So if I go to statues, of course, it'll have Statue of Liberty and no, oh, that's no Robert Mondavi, Ryan, Reinery in Napa. Um, let's see. Frankenstein. 
Frankenstein the statue monster. Is someone dressed as Frankenstein. Oh, this uh, this one. That's in New York City. That that's right. Prometheus. Mm -hmm. Does it identify buildings and locations? Uh, some of them. I bet not all of them. Um, Nancy, take notes. You got a bunch of pictures. You don't know where they are. Let's see if it identifies the Chrysler building. Well, that's an old picture, but. Nope. No. But that uh, that's also from 2003. It might not be great resolution. It looks like the pic it was that picture of the Chrysler building taken from the Empire State Building. Yes, it was. Figured that out. <laughs> then also, there's also live text. And that, that was included in iOS 15, but now you can do live text and video by if you show a video and let's see, see this one from Las Vegas. I have a question. And say for, say for example, uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, just if I wanted to copy this Polo Towers, I can copy it, go into notes, do a new note and paste it. And it, <laughs> that was completely wrong. Let's do one I know I'll do. Uh, we'll go back to photos. Keep going here. I think that will work. Yeah, that worked. And then if there's a address or a phone number, it will automatically offer to look it up, the address up in Apple Maps or the phone number in, or it will uh, call the phone number. Will it change names of um, <clears throat> photos or files, however you want to call them, in groups? So say, for example, you take a bunch of uh, um, pictures of flowers in Paladuro Canyon. Mm -hmm. You could make a, uh, a folder or something like that and put all those flowers in that folder. And then instead of having IMG.0293, um, mm -hmm. you could say rename all of these Paladuro with sequen sequentially increasing numbers. Will it do that? I know when you I have screenshots and I want to change the name, you can replace part of the screenshot by saying, you know, re rename X number of files and you can grab a bunch of them. I just say replace screenshot with, you know, whatever, but I leave the date, you know, I mean, I leave the, the number, the time that the screenshot was taken so they don't all have the identical name. Right. So you don't have to replace the whole thing is what I'm trying to get at. That gives you some sequencing. No, I don't think you can do that in photos yet, but, but uh, there are other apps I think that can do that. Okay, thanks. If you have all a bunch you of pictures do, that aren't you do photos. All batching is a, a date and time and location. You can do through batch. So those are uh, some of the new, oh, I forgot about this. Um, they have this new feature that called, um, where you can copy the subject only from the, the foreground. And th this now works on the Mac with Ventura. So if I have this shell and I right click it, It'll give copy or that's we'll copy the whole image or just copy the subject and that will just be the shell. So if I go into let's go into an email. And 
and create a new email and command V, then it just shows the shell without any of the background. Cool. And you can do the same thing on the iPhone and the iPad. And you, you can even drag, drag and drop with the I, iPad and iPhone. Okay. Now let's go into mail. I don't think I like that stuff on the side. So now in mail, if you send an email, At the bottom, you now have an undo send that will only last for 10 seconds. So if you get down there fast enough, then you can <laughs> unsend it and it won't, won't have sent that email. Now you can go into settings and let's see, somewhere. Oh, yes, undo a send delay. So you can adjust it to 10, 20, or 30 seconds uh, of time to undo that send. So if you think you're going to be slow to get down there and undo it, then you can give yourself a little bit more time or turn that off completely if you don't want it. So basically, this gives you a chance to stop an email when you meet and we suddenly see the glaring typo um, right after you hit send. That's right. If you're fast enough. <laughs> well, you can change it to 20 or 30 seconds. Yeah, you can change the time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I probably need minutes, though, to figure <laughs> out that I've screwed up. <laughs> you can also... Now, send yes. now, send it at eight o'clock a.m. tomorrow or send later. And then you can tell when you want to send that email. Oh and you can schedule when you want to send the email. Does that go into like a pending folder? Uh, I haven't tried it yet. Let's. Let's see. Or is it or just is it for a just... test here? Send it tomorrow at eight forty nine a.m. Wait, I need to put test test. Yes, it puts it in your draft. Okay. Mm, okay. Thanks. Now that's interesting. But you don't have to touch it from here on, right? Wait, is that the? Uh -uh. That's, that's a different the one email. I did earlier. Nathan. Oh, that was the one I unsent. Never that's mind. not the same email. Yeah, that's the one I unsent to myself. So we don't delete see. that one. Where it goes. So yeah, I don't know where, it, 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 where or if it puts it anywhere. Look in the sent folder. Yeah, it could be there. No. While we're talking about mail, uh, one of my favorite features was uh, return to sender. Does anybody know what happened? They gave up on it, I think. I tried to get back on that, and I ended up doing an alternative version of that, and I BCC myself on everything. That way I know it went through the server. Yeah. There's also a snoozing feature now. So if, for example, you have an email that you just, you think it's important, but you want to be reminded about it later, if you right click and go to remind me, you can remind me in an hour tomorrow or pick a time later. And all of this is now available on the iPhone and the iPad as well.
searches just faster. Excuse me? Just the new ones? Yes, just Iowa 16 and Ventura. Okay. Well, I've got 16 on my iPhone 8. All right, let, let me bring up the phone then, and we'll show you how that all works on the phone then. Okay, so we have our email. Let's send it again to myself. And then subject will do test, test. You should do it test two, or then you can figure out which one it is. So when you tap and hold on the arrow to send it, don't tap on the arrow because that will send it now. Then you can send it at eight o'clock a.m. tomorrow or send it later and, and adjust when you want to send it. Cool. So if I send it now, then at the bottom you see undo send. So I can click that and undo the send. Thanks. And again, if you, you have to go into settings and mail. And that th you have the same amount of time to undo send delay, 10, 20, or 30 seconds. And then also with an email, if you tap and hold. Yeah. Oh, there it is. So uh, on the phone, you swipe over and then you go into more. Okay. Swipe and then more, and then you'll have the remind me. So that's where you can remind yourself on an email for later. Okay, Nathan, when you um, upgraded to uh, Ventura on your computer, did you have any kind of problems or bugs or anything that you noticed? Or do you think it's pretty stable for people to um, upgrade to this operating system? Now, I have a M1 Mac Mini. And I wasn't too worried about the upgrade. I, I, if you have an older computer at the lower range of what they accept, uh, you may be more cautious about that. Mm -hmm. um, or an Intel computer. Well, but, I have an in, I have an Intel that I, it's an iMac Intel. That's the, one of the last ones they produce. It's that's uh, uh, and you know um, got a the other the other operating the other chip in it basically not the not the m chips yeah i didn't personally i didn't have any problems with my m1 my mini so mm, okay and is that what i'm i'll, I'll upgrade that other one down here then okay mm. uh nathan i think the um delayed send messages are kept in the outbox <clears throat> there's a mailbox called the outbox but I think that's only available from the from the menu, mail menu. But it may not even be there. I see. <laughs> Click on help and type out box. It'll put you right to it. No, you're searching within messages. Click on help in the main menu and type oh. out box. Hmm. Yeah, it's not, not there. If people don't receive emails, it might still be in the outbox. Hover on that. Go back to help and hover on that third one there. Yeah, let's see what that says. That's taking email accounts offline. Yeah. Is that it? I've seen the outbox. It pops up briefly when you send something. And then as soon as it's finished being sent, 
the out box disappears and the uh, sent uh, box uh, indicates another an addition. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not there. there when there's when there's something in it. Yeah, if there's something oh. wrong with it, it'll stay in the out box until you correct it, and then you can resend it, and it'll go. Yeah, we'll see if uh, this test email gets sent tomorrow at eight fifty a.m. Yeah, huh. it's not good. You can, <laughs> and you're gonna have to. The outbox is a ghost because they say that you can later get back into those mails and send them immediately if you want to. So it's got to be that outbox has got to be available. <clears throat> well, um, maybe we're a, running maybe out of some, time, um, and references. I've only gotten through half of my presentation, so I think I, I better stop. <laughs> okay. Uh. We weighted you down. Well, we just tend to have a lot of questions. Yeah, so um, just, <coughs> just some quick things. You can now um, change extensions in the Files app on the iPad and iPhone. It, so if you have something in, in a, a .md or .markdown file, you can change it to .txt like you would on a Mac, and it will ask keep .md or keep .txt. So you can do that now in the Files app. It'll show passive files now. So if, if you have things nested in folders, it will show the whole path. Um, you can have a lot more options for smart folders and notes. You have tab groups in Safari. Let me show that real, real fast. So tab groups now, I have, so my banking will show my credit union, Bank of America, and then my Verizon bill that I pay. Amanda has a different set. Her bank is Jefferson Bank and Bank of America, and then the water and energy bills. So you can set up your tab groups to when, whenever they you click on them to automatically go to that set of websites. Um, I think your sharing has fallen down. They're true context menus. So if you have a mouse on the iPad and you and you right click on it, instead of that little bar on top that says copy paste, it is it's a true context menu like it would be on the Mac, up and down, copy, okay. cut, paste, all, all of that. Um, Nathan, have you done a, vi uh, a YouTube video on, on any of this yet? No. Are you going to? I, I've watched a whole bunch of them <laughs> <laughs> and, and read uh, some reviews. So that's what I'm, I'm t basing this presentation off of. Okay. Oh, there's now a weather app in, on the Mac and the clock app on the Mac. So here's the weather. We can't see it. You're not sharing. Oh, sharing. Not, I'm not, sh not showing. Let's share. Oh, and weather. So you have the weather app on the Mac now and the clock app with the same stuff that's on the iPad or the phone. Another neat thing is multi-stop routing. And so when you're in Apple Maps and you want to go, so let's say I'm going to Austin, let's see, maps. I can now, let's say I wanted to uh, stop at San Marcos and I wanted to stop at some other places on the way. You can just have all these stops together. So it will take you from one destination to the next, to the next.
th- that's probably better for a road trip when you're trying to plan out where which stops you're going to make and all of that. You can track your medication and health. So you get a notification uh, and you can say that you've take, taken all your meds for that day. Um, dictation now uh, shows the keyboard at the same time. So if this works well, particularly if you have like a weird name th- that you're, you're dictating that's not available uh, through the dictation. And so you, you can kind of stop what you're saying type in that name and then keep on talking and it will continue and and, and it doesn't take the keyboard away. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the l- little features that are in iOS 16. And that's, I'm out of time, so that's going to be it. <laughs> mm. Uh, back to you, John. Well, Nathan, thank you very much for giving that overview. Yeah. Uh, tell, I think you could do a two or three hour program and still have questions left over. Uh, there's so many things that have come out and I think we'll all be learning for quite a while. So we're ready to wrap up tonight's meeting.